Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big Ten football predictions today, and our next team, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Minnesota was a team I actually picked to be a sleeper in the Big Ten last season, and they really didn't disappoint too much. They went 8-4 and four and then upset Washington State in their bowl game to finish 9-4. and four. Ironically, they actually almost boycotted that bowl game, but they ended up winning 17-12 to 12 in what was actually an upset in that holiday bowl. Uh, this season, they get P.J. Fleck, uh, a head coach. He moved over from Western Michigan. So a lot of expectations are pretty high for the Golden Gophers. We know he's going to bring the intensity. He was one of the hottest coaching names last season, other than Tom Herman, who went to Texas. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do for Minnesota this season. Uh, he returns 12 starters. They do lose their quarterback in Mitch Leitner, though, but they return Denver Croft at quarterback. He's a sophomore. Uh, Mitch Leitner was a guy that I thought was really going to take some strides last season and really... Uh, surprised a lot of people at Minnesota, but he didn't. Uh, he kind of stayed about where he was, average, and that was a little disappointing. But hopefully they'll get uh, different results from Croft this season. He's very young, so hopefully he can progress uh, through the years. But P.J. Fleck, uh, I think, has a lot of high expectations for Minnesota, a lot of excitement. And I'm very curious to see how they're going to do this season, his first year. Um, so just taking an initial look at their schedule, the first half looks very doable. Actually, they could be favored in their first seven games. Not saying they're going to start off the season 7-0, but looking at it, very favorable schedule. It really starts to get tough uh, right about here on October 28th when they face Iowa on the road. But let's start off and see how they're going to do. So they face off Buffalo in the first game. Shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be any issues for Minnesota. That's going to be a great first game for P.J. Fleck uh, to kind of get his feet wet in the Big Ten, just to kind of see what his team's looking like. They should be able to work out any problems they have against Buffalo uh, in preparation for this Oregon State game, his first true game against a uh, Power 5 opponent since he came to Minnesota. And this was a game that I originally marked down as a Minnesota victory. But I changed it. I changed it for an Oregon State victory. And a lot of factors point to that, one of them being that it's on the road, another one being that they're more experienced. Uh, head coaching-wise and player-wise, Oregon State returns 15 starters. They get Gary Anderson at head coach. He's going into his third year there. And, uh, and P.J. Fleck, you know, this, is, this is different for them. I mean, he did upset Northwestern last year at Western Michigan and almost defeated Wisconsin in the Cotton Bowl. So it's not like he's never faced a Power 5 opponent before. Um, but I don't know how he's going to do, especially in his second game at Minnesota. And a lot of the signs are pointing, to, for me, for a loss at Minnesota. And that's what I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him a loss to Oregon State on the road. And I think, uh, like I said, a lot of factors for me point that I originally had it marked down as a victory, but I did a little more research and decided to move on and decide as, uh, as a loss. Middle Tennessee, a team that they should not overlook at all. Brent Stockstill, one of the uh, best quarterbacks in the Conference USA right now, uh, couldn't lead Middle Tennessee to a conference title. Uh, but I think with it being at home, with them coming off that Oregon State loss, they're going to need a win. They can't afford to start off the season one and two. And Minnesota is definitely not going to be a horrible team this year. They're going to get the winner of Middle Tennessee and then a bye week going into their first Big Ten game under P.J. Fleck against Maryland. Uh, and if you look at the schedule, these next four Big Ten games, Maryland at Purdue, Michigan State, and Illinois, only one of them's on the road at Purdue, and they're all winnable, all winnable. Minnesota has seven returning starters on offense and five on defense, so I do think the uh, offense will be the, the factor this season. That's what's going to carry the team more so than the defense, and we saw that even last year at Western Michigan under P.J. Flagg. He was more of an offensive uh, kind of team. So uh, I think they're going to get the win over Maryland. Coming off the bye, they're going to be rested. And Maryland's no powerhouse. You know, they're no team that's really going to upset anybody major or really contend for the Big Ten title. And I think Minnesota will get the win over Maryland. And then at Purdue also has a brand-new head coach, uh, Jeff Brom. And they, like I said, have David Blow at quarterback, uh, who's going to be very dangerous, if you ask me. He could give Minnesota's young defense some fits. But I think in the end, Minnesota's going to be able to go on the road and get a win over the Boilermakers. I think if you look at it, um, Braum inherited a worse position than P.J. Fleck just because Purdue has had uh, so little success this past few years. He did get, a, I think he got a better quarterback situation than P.J. Fleck but in terms of the environment, uh, the history, uh, recent success. P.J. Fleck definitely got the better job there. Um, so I think that will he'll, he'll, be a fun one to watch. Brand new Big Ten coaches facing off against each other, but I think P.J. Fleck will have the advantage and get the win. And then Michigan State and Illinois back-to-back -back home games. Uh, I would be more concerned about the Michigan State game than the Illinois game because Mark D'Antonio you know, is one of the better coaches in this Big Ten. But with both of them being at home and Michigan State not really knowing what they're going to be like since they're nothing like they were back when they made the playoff a few years ago, I think they're actually going to get the win over both of these teams. 
And there really shouldn't be a problem in any of these. Like I said, the biggest ones I'd be concerned about would be Michigan State and at Purdue. But I really don't think it's going to be any issue. And I think they'll start off 4-0 and in conference play, which would be amazing under P.J. Flagg. That's impressive. And if they were to win that Oregon State game, which they could, uh, they would, in fact, start off 7-0. and So that would be very impressive uh, for a first-year head coach. And, but like I said, the schedule is very favorable. Unfortunately for Minnesota, look at those last five games. At Iowa, at Michigan, at Northwestern, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. Three road games, two at home, and they're all against very tough teams in very tough locations. We'll start off with Iowa. If you've watched my Big Ten videos, you've heard me say repeatedly, I would pick this team to lose if it were at Iowa. But since it's not, they're going to win. Iowa is a very dangerous place to play. We've seen that in multiple occasions. Most recently, last year when they upset Michigan. You know, this season, I think Minnesota going to Iowa, they're going to be riding high. You know, they're going to be 6-1, undefeated in conference. Iowa, middle of the pack, will have a few conference losses by this point. But I think Iowa's going to end up getting uh, getting the best of the Golden Gophers in this one. And I'm going to give Minnesota the loss there. And then, unfortunately, things don't get any easier. They have to travel to the big house. They have to go to Michigan, a team I do have taken a little bit of a step back. 8-4 or 9-3. Don't see them getting that 10-win mark. They could. I just don't see it. Uh, but Michigan, nonetheless, is still going to be a very dangerous team, very difficult team led by Jim Harbaugh. We all know that. Um, so we're going to have to see how that goes. But I don't think Minnesota will be able to go on the road and upset the Wolverines at home. I just don't see that happening. That would be a shocker, if you ask me, if they went on the road to Michigan and won. So no loss there. They need to stop the bleeding, and it's not going to come in Northwestern Wisconsin, but I do think they'll get the win over Nebraska. It's a home game. After back-to-back road games, like I said, they really need to stop the bleeding in this one. And I think they'll get the win over Nebraska. Nebraska is more of a younger team. Uh, actually, Michigan is least experienced, more not as experienced as Nebraska, but is at home. And Nebraska is still very young, breaking in a new quarterback and everything. So I think Minnesota will get the win over the Cornhuskers and stop that bleeding just for a little bit, though, because then they face the top two teams in the West at Northwestern and Wisconsin. Um, Northwestern, uh, led by a very dynamic quarterback and running back, uh, Pat Fitzgerald's done a great job there. And with it being on the road in Northwestern, potentially playing for a New Year's Six Bowl berth, don't see Minnesota going on the road and upsetting them. And then Wisconsin in the final game of the season, the rivalry game. This could be one of those things where Minnesota and P.J. Fleck pull off one of the biggest upsets of the year and upset Wisconsin in the final game. I just don't see it, though. It's at home, so it does benefit them. And they really don't have much to play for. They're just playing for a better bowl berth. Wisconsin will be playing for a Big Ten championship appearance. And I think Wisconsin, knowing that's what they're playing for and um, having more higher of a stakes than Minnesota, I think Minnesota will end up getting the loss and Wisconsin with the win. And actually, Minnesota will finish the season 7-5, and five, in my opinion, which is not bad at all. And for a first-year head coach in a Power 5 conference like this, with a not-as-experienced team with only 12 returning starters, that is not bad at all. And as a Minnesota fan, I would be happy with that. I would not be happy with the fact that we started 6-0, and or 6-1, and and then only won one game after that. That would be very disappointing, but they do have to realize that those last five games are just brutal, with three of them being on the road in very tough locations. Uh, so I think 7-5 and five is very reasonable, and that would be a great first year under P.J. Fleck. He would have the Golden Gophers heading in the right direction, even though it is a step down from last year's 9-4 and four record. Uh, that would be huge for Minnesota to go 7-5 and five this season. So I'm very excited to see how he does. I know a lot of people are going to be watching Minnesota this season because of P.J. Fleck. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I'm very excited to watch the Golden Gophers and see how they fare this season. So please stay tuned on the Gridiron Expert. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And please continue to share our videos. The more you share, the more likes, comments, and subscriptions we get. And it just, it just helps us out so much. So we really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.